get this off of me, we'll get home. Amen. <laughs> so we've uh, been praying all week and sitting there the other night and uh, the little family and um, Knob Road was another prayer request we was thinking about before we got in here. And y'all remember them and keep praying for them. And I know that they're in a, in a good place because they know in whom they believe. They've trusted confidently in God and and we all ought to all likewise be in the same way, amen. And uh, this, the, uh, watching our loved ones pass on is not something that's going to get less. The more you live, it it increases. And it's uh, um, like Sister Valerie is talking about 33-year-old man. That feller had no idea that he would be going on into glory at such a time. Uh, most of us do not. And... Uh, it's for that reason that this gospel must continue to go out and be preached. It's for that reason that we ought to hold fast to the hope that we have. It's for that reason that we gather on Wednesday nights and Sunday mornings and Sunday nights that God can continue to do the work that He has set forth by and through Jesus Christ who came and bore our sins on the cross. Uh, just a, a few verses we want to read and um over in Luke, if you want to stand, you're uh, more than welcome in honor of God's Word. In Luke chapter 24, we'll read a few verses starting at verse 45. The Bible says, Then open he their understanding that they might understand the Scriptures. And said unto them, Thus it is written, Thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And that... Repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I, I send the promise of the Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. That's all we want to read. Let's ask God to bless this time. Father, bless this word, this time, this moment. And... Have your way with us, we pray. We thank you for your word. And Lord, we look for that power from on high now and ask your blessing upon it all in the name of Jesus. We uh, read this and we're ever glad and thankful that such a, a scripture was given to us to share with you tonight. And as we were uh, thinking about this and, and everybody uh, we, we talk about the Holy Spirit and we talk about being born again and, and we know that without the Spirit of God, you're none of God's. And, and as we look at this Spirit and the, uh, the Word of God, I'm thankful tonight that the, the Lord uh, gave this Word and He took it and He shared it with the disciples and He instructed them over in the uh, book of John. It said that he, he breathed on them in chapter 20, verse uh, 21 and 22, I believe it was. And and yet, uh, even though they had that spirit breathed on them, they, they were not ready. And I, and I believe that the church has not been ready for some time. And I believe it's time that we got ready. I believe that it's time that we uh, just got in front of God and, and asked God that we would be endued with power from on high. And, and you know, you'd say, well, you know, I got all I needed when I got saved. But I'm going to tell you what, if you're not uh, living um, the majority of your time thinking about God, thinking about His Spirit, and thinking about what God uh, needs to do with you, then I'm going to tell you, you're not ready. And I, I want you to be ready. Amen. I want you to be instant in season and out of season. I want you to be ready always to give the hope that you have. I want you always to be ready to share with some lost soul in the, in the very moment that they need it most, that Jesus Christ died for them and that He loved them and gave himself for them and that it says here that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations and starting in Jerusalem and that part's been done and now the part that needs to be done is that you get ready to share the word of God and to be ready to give the hope that you have and to be ready to wait on God and get prepared that God can do what he wants to in your life and share what God's done in your life and what God's done on the cross of Calvary and the lives of others. The 
the disciples did just exactly what Christ asked them to do. He got, they got right there. They went into the upper room and they waited. And, and you know, and I know Thomas didn't go up there. And I know he wasn't there when God breathed on them. And I'm sure that had he been there, he'd have been with them the whole time. But it was a week later we read that Thomas was there. And y'all know what happened. Uh, they, they went and told Thomas, and he was, you know, that, that word was. Pen doubting Thomas that the whole world know. It's amazing that the whole world can can relate to doubting Thomas, but can't relate to dying, buried, and resurrection Jesus. What a shame, amen. Yet the whole world lost and saved alike can can remember that doubting Thomas is still going out through it through the, the waves of the world and the air way and the, and into the lips of others and the airs of others, but yet when they talk about Jesus in the cross, they're unaffected. But there ought to be a witness. Amen. They see the whole point was that I'm sure they were ready. They, you know, uh Old, old Peter seemed like he lived his life always ready, right? Always, let's do this, right? Let's let's go out there. Uh, the disciples asked him as I was reading and studying and praying and thinking about this. They said, uh, how long, Lord, until the kingdom comes? He said, it's not for you to know the times or the ages. Amen. So he was telling them, but be ready. Amen. And, and we don't know the time. We didn't know 33-year-old co-worker was going to be going on. Amen. Uh, and was, did that shock you? Yeah. That shocked me. Amen. Because I didn't expect that. I'm, I'm used to Valerie coming in and saying, I want you to pray for so-and-so or, or, or my best friend's got cancer and I want you to pray for them. But when you come in and, and just a day or two and you, and you hear a word, uh, uh, he was coming in, he was, everything seemed normal, but... Was it? But is it? And it's not. You see, because death is real. It's permanent. It doesn't, it doesn't undo itself. We, we, we don't have the, the privilege of saying, Jesus, if you'd have been here, right? We don't have the we don't have that privilege. We don't, we don't have that. But yet Jesus wants us to be prepared, Brother Larry. Amen. Because as Brother Tommy was standing here talking about how uh, you were and what your condition was, he said, I don't know if he's coming back, but he said, I can tell you this. I'll see him again. He's ready. He said, he was bragging on, on you, Larry. He's bragging on your faith. He was bragging that whatever God wants, amen, and, and that we would have that hope one for another is, is success. That's where success comes, Jeb. And that we have that hope, amen, when we fellowship and we talk about the Lord and we have that witness. What's that witness? That Holy Spirit, amen. See, He didn't tell them. He didn't tell them just tarry until you be endowed with power. He didn't stop there, did He? He said that you be endowed with power from on high. See, unless you be endowed with power from on high, you're not ready. And I want you to be ready. I want you to be ready to tell of the hope that you have. I want you to be as the children of Israel, as, as the disciples, excuse me, as the disciples were on that, on that next week, amen, when they were up there in that upper room and Jesus was there and Thomas was there and He said, Blessed are they that have not seen but yet believed. Amen. Because when they come out of the upper room then, they were ready. They were endued with power from on high. All the, in, 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 all the desire that they had for an earthly kingdom was gone. What they wanted was a godly kingdom to come. Amen. And a godly kingdom is not the same as an earthly kingdom. How do you know that Jesus told Pilate, He said, my kingdom is not of this world. He said, if my kingdom was of this world, my disciples would fight. Amen. They had the right spirit then. Amen. They, they weren't going to take Antifa by the throat. They weren't going to take Antifa with sticks and stones. What we fight Antifa with is with the power that comes from on high. And that's not done in the flesh. That's not done with reasoning how I can figure out how to break up a mob. How I can break up the devil himself. Amen. 
But remember this, that no man calls Christ a curse but out, but by the Spirit. No man calls Jesus Christ the Christ but by the Spirit. Amen. You see what's wrong with the world is they have not been endued with power from on high. Now maybe that group, that church group out there and on uh, what we call on the left side or the left wing or uh, uh, the left side of the nation because they is definitely on the left of something but it ain't on the right side of God. Amen. And what they were is they, they were looking for that power from on high. Amen. And let's pray that for them. Amen. Because all those people that did those things will stand before God one day in shame. But what I want them to do is stand before God in praise. That Christ loved them too. While they were, while they were trying to persecute a, a, a bunch of, of, of family members, no doubt they had to be family members if they had little babies there and then there was young and old and everybody in between. But, you know, that, this is happening in your country. This isn't happening uh, in some third world country. This is, this is coming to your house. This is coming to your town. This is coming to your city. And the only way we'll be able to combat such an attack and such an enemy is that we be endued with power from on high. All oh, that we pray to be endued with power from on high. All oh, that we get ourselves in a in a shape where where they're not fighting me, but they're fighting my God, Jeb. Amen. Where they where where they say, well, hey, Jesus said they hated me, your Lord and Master. They're going to hate you. Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised when they reject your faith, when they reject your Scripture, when they reject your God. When they reject what you believe. When they reject who you pray to. When they reject how you live your life and, and that you spend your life living it for God. To a God you can't see. To a God that you, you hope for. A God that, that the world says, where is your God? Your God has to be big inside of you. He has to be bigger than what you feel. He has to be bigger than what you think. You say, well, wait a minute. I thought you got to... You, hey, a man, what a man thinks comes out of his heart. So the, the, the combative place and the place where we must get prepared is in our heart. In our heart that God dwells richly and abundantly. Amen. Because I, I don't know, Jerry, if I, can, if I can take a direct attack physically and stand in the right state of mind. But I believe that if I be endued with power on high, I don't know if I'll ever be like Stephen was. The deacon who waited on the tables of the of the widows and the and the elderly and, and was doing a work for God and yet the power of God was so great in him that they hated him. They hated him and they and they looked to kill him and they came with him and the Bible says that they gnashed their teeth on him and they set him down and they stoned him to death and in doing so he did not bring accusations or a fight against them but prayed for them and said God have mercy upon them for they know not what they do the very words that Christ uttered on the cross was the very words that Stephen the deacon said before them. And the only way he was able to do that was that he was endued with power on high. And I don't know what it would take for you to get endued with power on high, but the Bible says here that repentance and remissions of sin should be preached. And that if we, the church, get right, judgment will first start at the house of God. Then we can expect that the power of God, the witness of God would also go before us, helping us, shaping us, creating an atmosphere around us that, that is fit for sinners to hear that they must repent, that they must turn from their sins, that they must call on God because it didn't say that they just should repent, but that 
remission of sins would be granted unto them. That's the good part. Amen. That if they come to Jesus, they can be forgiven and can be saved. Amen. That's what it's all about. If we go about trying to judge the world, we'll be judged ourselves. But if we preach repentance in the name of Jesus and remission of sins, then we'll see souls saved. And that's what it's all about. When the disciples came out of the upper room and, and we turned the page as Luke starts writing in the book of Acts and they started preaching, you have crucified Jesus Christ whom we now preach and all them heard it in their own tongues. I, I counted it up once. I counted 28 languages. I've heard others say 32. I've heard all kinds of different things. But in my feeble mind, I just counted how many names was there. But I can tell you this. They said, we do all hear them speak the goodness of God in our own language. And when it was all said and done, they didn't marvel about that. What they marveled about was that they were sinners and they could be saved. And that they said, what must we do to be saved? Why? Because they had heard that they could be saved. And the Holy Spirit was doing a work inside of them. And that they became what endued with power from on high themselves. And I believe they were saved. Amen. And praise God. That's my prayer. That's my message. That we seek God to a place where we be endued with power from on high. At whatever it costs you. Ask God what you can do to be endued with power from on high. Let's get a song. The result will be the witness of the Holy Spirit that you have been with Jesus yourself. Amen. It won't be that you're good. It won't be that you're, you're righteous. It'll be that you, like them, are a sinner, but you've been saved and they have not been saved. God help us. If you need to pray tonight, if you need to be endued with power tonight, if your sin is greater than His grace tonight, remission of sins is available by faith and repentance in Christ. Amen. That's my message tonight. Stand to your feet. As we sing a verse of a song, if you need Jesus for any reason.